Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is FMA Discussion, episode 210. And tonight is um, more theme oriented, where we're going to be looking at um, through the lens of some things that have happened uh, lately, but we're going to be coming from a positive point of view with diplomacy and uh, as far as how we can rectify things and what's the best way to go about it for the overall community, FMA community. And tonight I have with me the one, the only, the infamous Paula Rubio. What's up, Dean? Thank you. I really for appreciate me. you doing this, you know, because I know you're really busy and you got you're doing all those great things. So I appreciate you taking time to um you know to do this. And so I uh, thank you. Oh, it's a it's a pleasure, brother. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And uh so if you're watching, folks, please tell us where you're watching from, smash that like button, and we're gonna get into it. Um if you have questions uh by all means you know let us know and we'll try to address them as we are uh we're discussing the topics and all that so just um we're gonna be kind of going back and forth this is not really obviously a list of questions per se we're gonna kind of just tackle some points um again to try to prove upon the community this is not going to be divisive in nature that's not going to resolve or help anything uh, you never told me this stuff <laughs> I thought we were going to speak the truth, bro. Not divisive. I mean, how do you how do you speak the truth without dividing the yeah. well, you group? Know, you know, people. But that's okay. I have That'd to be read. nice. I guess I'm just over too nice, like you said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that. There's that saying, Dean. You know, don't confuse my kindness for weakness. And I, I yeah. certainly think that because your kindness exudes from your very being that that might be construed as weakness and i don't want anyone to ever get that impression mm. um you know yeah anyway you're just super awesome and you're the reason that i got attached to fma discussion to begin with i believed in your vision i believed it was pure <clears throat> and uh hey throughout the whole growth trajectory of fma discussion did I not warn you of these milestones that you're going to hit and the people no, no, that will come along with them? You 100% did. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, they don't want you to uh, speak on that as far as like, um, I think if I recall correctly, you were mentioned, you know, staying true um, to yourself. Yeah. I don't want to uh, put words in your mouth, but yes. <laughs> well, that's what it is. That's what it is. The Filipino martial arts community is so thirsty, right? It's very thirsty for um being heard for being misunderstood or or more appropriately there's a fear of being misunderstood and so whenever there is an outlet that people can cling to to be able to disseminate their personal messages to include vendettas and to include the perpetuation of past uh hurt feelings and of scars they will jump onto that at every opportunity mm -hmm. right you see guys like Novus, or sorry, uh, PHP, like all of these people who just randomly come up, Bagani, people who, who create these pseudonyms because they want to perpetuate these uh, scars and they want others to feel their pain. And so yeah. when I told you, be careful as, as FMA discussion grows, you're going to have parasitic elements or are going to want to attach to your growth and suck some of that out in order mm. to serve them. And that has happened. And, and and because you're so nice, you know, some of the, the parasites cling on painlessly and they draw blood very, very slowly. And you don't notice that they're there until it's too late. Yeah, and you're so like, what happened? What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> why? Why did? But yeah. at the same time, I understand that forums go through peaks and valleys and evolutions and rebirths. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's never it's never really too late to to reclaim what you want. FMA discussion to be, and mm -hmm. we're just going to be more cognizant of the fact that Filipino, it, there is a large group of Filipino martial artists who are so desperate to be heard and unable to create their own platform, that they're mm -hmm. going to jump onto whatever platform happens to be on that growth trajectory. And you just got to swat them away like flies and be like, nah, that's not yours. This yeah. is something else, right? No, as well said. No, you're absolutely right. And, um, and you know, and um, we've been, you know, we've collectively have done a really good job. Uh, you know, there were some couple of weeks there where we had a kind of clean house, but overall, in the last, gosh, I would say, I don't know how many months, but things have been relatively 
you know, pretty good in there. Uh, as yeah. far as pH, pH hasn't been in there, um, or at least not till present day. And under any um, alias for that matter, he hasn't tried coming back in. And I think there's an aspect of him. He appreciates what I do. I don't think he has anything against me. You know, no, it's not. It, again, it's just one to hitch that ride. And by yeah. the way, I'm not speaking across the board, right? Like okay, Edison yeah, sure. Pena. Edison Pena is a gem. Like I, he's he's an absolute gem in my in my opinion. I, I agree. He's a very calm, yeah. level headed. He asks good questions, uh, and he's he, he very much reminds me of you. you yeah, know? you guys have We're a, very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have a ton of experience, right, and a lot of wisdom and knowledge. And yet you speak with uh, such humility and calmness. I think mm -hmm. we need more of that and like really less of me in FMA, to be honest. Yeah, but I think there's a nice balance. Like, I think you bring a nice balance. This is why I think we get along because it's like yin and yang with me and you. I think there's such a, like a nice balance. Like I probably could use a little more of you. And I could use a little more of you, you know? And I think to a degree, you know, I, I, there was a quote that I remember or uh, a, a philosophy and it's about friendship, right? Yeah. And the, the friends that you have and the friends that you hold for a really long time hold certain qualities that you lack in yourself that absolutely. you wish to develop, right? And so, mm. yeah, absolutely. I wish I was I, I wish I was more like Dean Franco. Um, you know, but I'm also very protective of the Dean Franco types. Um, and this is where I'm coming from. No, right? and I saw that. And I can't even tell you and convey in words how much, you know, I appreciate what you did. And um, I thought you did really well, too, how you presented that. You pointed out the good points that they did, some of the things that they did do well, and some of the things, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody has value. Everybody has a contribution. Right. And if we can get past, you know, the, the baggage that we want to carry and that we need to want to perpetuate for, for, for whatever reason. Uh, and again, sometimes I feel very uh, hypocritical, right? Because I propose certain things that I, that I sometimes escape from in, in, in action myself, right? Like I, I propose, you know, we should be calm and we should, be, you know, we mm -hmm. should discuss things openly. But my execution doesn't always follow, um, you know, the things that I propose, and I'm, I'm vividly aware of my shortcomings in that degree. And I think I think people want to um, hold that against me as if I don't know that about myself. You know, Paul is being hypocritical. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm being hypocritical. Maybe I'm carrying my own baggage as well. Yeah, Maybe I, I have my own mandate, right? Yeah, outside lens looking in though, I've seen an absolute growth in you in all spectrums and levels, physical, mental, like you're the way you present things. I just think you're doing phenomenal. I just gotta be honest. I, I just think you, what you're doing is phenomenal. Not just with the group you have up there, which I think is exceptional, but just- oh, amazing, love yeah, those I, I, 100%, I mean, what you have there is an absolute gold. Um, so. I, I'm a huge fan, as you already know. I, I just, again, you know, there are times I wish I would like stomp my foot and scream and yell. And, <laughs> but here's the thing this is why I want to convey to the audience tonight, like, because I've gotten messages like, you know, when this, when this all came about, I got to, well, what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to handle this? You know, what do you think? And I'm like, you know, so of course, my, you know, your mind is just going crazy. Like, okay. So my approach was, okay. Hey, let's fill people in, right? People oh, yeah, don't sure. know what this sure. is about. Sure. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Basically, uh, basically, some members of of FMA discussion, right? Mm -hmm. Members of the Filipino martial arts community had this debate, and the debate surrounded the idea of should non-Filipinos be allowed to lead Filipino martial arts systems. Right. And I, I thought it was a, it was a, it's a great question. One that I've tackled myself, but the problem was that it was like a six man panel and that people weren't necessarily allowed to speak their mind. They were delegated a perspective. Okay. One of my, if, if I can have and be proud of a gift that I believe that I have is that's to be able to see authenticity and truth, even through the mm. artificial filter of a video even through the artificial filter of this little debate game where, uh, you know, a perspective is delegated. Because I can see somebody like Michael Malagnon, who I think is a phenomenal Filipino martial artist, 
I know when he was channeling or playing by the rules of the game. And, and I can tell when he's being truthful. And, and across the board, I saw this. So I, I think <clears throat> I don't want to dismiss the idea that, yes, there were rules in place for this debate and that okay. they were delegated a perspective. But I think truth becomes apparent. You can't hide facial expressions that well. You know, you, and that was an hour's worth. I'm, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure you couldn't have been playing character for that entire hour. All right. And as part of this, you were, you were, you were sort of brought in as an example. Well, right. yeah. there, and he, you know, this Antoken guy, Paul, right. Who I admittedly I've had prior negative dealings with. I really don't like him. Uh, let's just be honest. Right. I don't like him at all. I think he's toxic to the Filipino martial arts community. And I say this knowing full well that there are people out there who just don't like me. They don't like my face. They don't like my tone. They don't like my approach. I'm fine with that. And so because I accept that about myself, I feel like as if I, I feel like I can be honest and just say, I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy at all. Right. Um, and that's it. And so this Paul guy brings you up in the conversation. Laughter ensued and a discussion was had about, you know, should Dean Franco be allowed to because FMA discussion and I told you this. It's its own thing. It's almost like a system, right? It's almost, it's akin to like a, a, a Filipino martial arts system because you have followers, right? You have uh, a charter, you have rules, you have mm -hmm. a mandate, right? Uh, and so this is the part. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like how that, I didn't like how that uh, came across as well. And I think what these guys did and at least three of them were sort of put in a corner, right? Like they were gonna go into this podcast. They didn't know they were gonna be delegated a perspective. Mm. So I don't wanna spread blame across the board. Yeah, I think right. if people watch the, the, I think if people watch the podcast, they'll be able to tell, you know? You know, I thought Riddell Arias was really genuine and, and he tried to play by the rules, but I really didn't like um, what they did up, to you in that discussion and I, it's okay that i may or may not disagree with some of the points made i just thought that it could have been handled much better especially considering yeah. that it's it's a really important question right yeah no no and i and i agree you know as far as the handling of that um when i well i guess let me back up before i get into you know my conversation with with one of them um i've been i've been able thus far to talk to one of them regarding it but but getting back to you know so honestly when that came about all right or better yet when i was made aware of it even though it was there for a couple of weeks and that's on me that i didn't see it sooner okay. just with everything going on and i i take the hit for that um plus it's a really crappy show like who would ever who would even see it <laughs> no. Well, yeah, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I'm trash talking. I'm just playing. No, no, I know, I know. So when I was receiving these messages, and so you know, of course, my mind's racing a thousand miles a minute, and I'm thinking like, okay, all right. So naturally, there was the natural animalistic nature of us to go in there and just you know that. But then I had to sit myself back, and I said. Okay, you are the face of our made a discussion. They know you as this person that welcomes everybody, lets everybody gets opportunity to be heard, to talk. I go, you have to tread lightly on this and not go in there in a china shop and going crazy because people are gonna be like, Wow, who's that guy? That's not the guy that we've seen in the 209 past episodes. So I had to wrestle with that and then the other thing is, okay, I also can't act, I have to act accordingly. I am the rep for Avenir, Amok, Burton, Brandon. I can't be acting like an idiot when, you know, I have to have some sense of assembly of the core and and all that. Plus, right. you are who you are. You know what I mean? And this is who I am. So, um, so one of the things I did was I turned the video inside and out. I, I watched it. I tried to see if I was overreacting. Was there maybe, was it supposed to be funny? 
was I maybe just the end of a joke? Am I looking at this too deeply? So then I was hit at a crossroads where I couldn't really generate a conclusion. And so what I did was I started asking people opinion I value. I said, please just tell me what you think of this. Am I overreacting? I haven't done anything yet about it, but what what do you think? What do you see? And all that. And the, and to be honest, all the feedback I got was it was done in poor taste. Um, I um, if I would, and one one person was very eloquent. And what they said was, I watched your interviews and I see a very nice flow and all that. When I was watching that, I couldn't even tell what their objective was. I go, I, the moderator, I couldn't tell what he was trying to do. I, I, I didn't understand the roles. Um, everybody said he should just mentioned your name. Um, like that was just, he shouldn't just said, he just should, he should just mentioned your name. It's not like nobody was going to realize it. Um, yeah. And I haven't talked to Paul yet, and I'm going to talk to Paul because I think he deserves to absolutely convey to me his I mean, and I'm going to listen with an open mind and open heart, like I do with everybody else. Um, I did talk good to for you, yeah, and I did talk to June. Had a very good conversation with June, very good. Um, and I expressed my concerns. I expressed how maybe it could have been done better from doing theme episodes myself. What I said was that's not the first theme episode I would have jumped on. I go, but you guys do. I go, I would have maybe tackled something a little lighter and then maybe progressed eventually to something like that. Um, I said, but that was just my thought. And, uh, but we had a very good conversation. Um, it really was. Um, and I'm looking forward to talking to the others. I definitely am seeking, you know, positive outcome. I, I don't want this to keep going on. Drama is not good for anybody. I can't have drama FMA discussion or just divisiveness or this discord or divide and conquer, I, I, I can't have it in there because that is a reflection on the community, you know, and before I keep going on, let's, let's get you what you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, I'll, I'll, I can, I can predict what's going to happen, right? There's going to be backpedaling. There's going to be the proposition that this has all been a misunderstanding. Um, there is going to be feigned apologies right but but underpinning that was that you just completely misunderstood uh, and this is the nature of a lot of uh filipino culture right mm -hmm. when we're pushed up against a wall we will fight but as much as possible we try to be non-confrontational and when it's it's avoidable we try to avoid it and this is the part of, of filipino culture that i shed very very early on because you know I, I was nine years old when i left the philippines where this was the norm and even in, in the family that I've built here in Canada, in some respects, that is still the norm. Uh, but I see the value of just being just straight up. Just, let's just be straight up about it. Uh, let's, let's call a spade a spade. Let's, let's deal with the issues head on. Let's not sweep things under the rug. So these things are going to happen. But what's going to continue are these backroom conversations, right? It, there's going to be a, an element of two-facedness about it. And uh, that... And I think that's the best that we can that we can hope for, because because what that is, I guess, mm -hmm. is civility. And if I, if at least the public sees that side and never gets to, see, you know, they see the tip of the iceberg, and, and mm -hmm. we'll call that the iceberg, even though there's a huge chunk of coldness beneath the surface. Um, maybe that's the best that we can hope for. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah, like in other words, even I put my best foot forward, which I'm going to yeah. do and talk to these guys. The end of all this, my goal is, in other words, if I if I have a list of my goal, my goals are a. I don't want this to continue. I don't want other people right. to be affected. I don't want other people brought into this. I just want this to end. Now, if there's stuff going on in the back rooms. Obviously, I'm, you know, as you know, I, mean, I, I can't control that if that's what they're going to do for their outlet and they continue right. what they want to do. Well, they're going to do yeah. that. Um, and I can't control yeah. it. But Long's, I'm not getting messages. I'm not stealing yeah. from the same people. There, There's a conclusive part to it. And then we can move on. That's really what I'm seeking. And, you know, the thing is, too, is that I have to put my best foot forward. And the reason being is because of my makeup of who I am. 
when I look in the right. mirror, I have to see the reflection in the mirror. And I have to say, see that, yes, you did everything possible. You put your best foot forward. You tried to seek resolvement. You made attempts. You made efforts. And there's nothing else you could have done. And that that's I like because that's, that's who I am. So I have to have that, <laughs> you know, that's so good, man. That's good for you, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a recent incident where I, I had to face up to somebody that I had trolled many years ago, somebody quite prominent in the tactical industry. I saw that and I you loved know. your post. <laughs> I, I thought that was so I loved your post on that. I know exactly what you're talking about. And I thought that was so yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and he and I have been able to, to develop a, a, a friendship. That was a that was a legit misunderstanding, and that was admittedly a different self that I am today. And I had mm. to recover from who I was. I'm a better person today. Um, but at the same time, let me be arrogant for a little bit, just for a second, Dean. Sure. All right. <laughs> and that is, who the are these guys? Mm. Like, you know, I think I don't want them to get the impression that you and I are doing this podcast for them. Because for me, I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing this for the community. We're Absolutely. making an example of them. Absolutely. They ain't shit, you know? Like, who, who cares? Who cares what Paul Antoken thinks about me? I, I don't, he has no bearing on my trajectory. He cannot change my trajectory, cannot change my path. He doesn't have that kind of influence. I choose not to give him that kind of thing. This is not an arrogant thing because I've got followers and all that stuff. It's it. This is me steadfast in my trajectory mm -hmm. and unwilling to allow somebody really like that to, uh, to change the trajectory. I'm doing this. I'm here for you, number one, but I'm here because I think this is a great example for the Filipino martial arts community. And I think the more we call out these kinds of, of behaviors, I think that what we're actually doing is we're not just chopping off weeds as they grow we're cultivating the soil so that the environment for for that kind of nonsense to grow is diminished mm. and i think that's what we're doing here uh and so well said. That, yeah. yeah i i appreciate the the commentary uh guru tom you know i really appreciate you um you're awesome Jack Latore, we can do better <laughs> absolutely yeah um sure tim hartman something. Tim Hartman is so like polarizing at times, but I love him for that because at the very least, that to Tim is straight up and he's honest, you know. And yeah, I think I, I think we need that. And you can agree or disagree with that to Tim, but at least you 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 know. You yeah, know yeah. You, you know what you're getting. We got he says they suck. So they kept changing weird. the question to fit the answer that they wanted, and that's <laughs> yeah. They moved the goalpost and they cornered these you know you know people like Udell and tony and michael you know they, they, they put him in this this corner and by the way raymond floro brother you you gotta join raymond floro and i had a big disagreement and his people came after me i know but you living know? guys now though oh it's amazing i he's love the guy he's he, me and tom are interviewing him tomorrow night oh, i'm, I'm really looking, looking forward i'm yeah. looking there's so much to learn from oh my god from ray from ray floro and he doesn't want a telegraphic want strike is yeah, yeah no, oh yeah and, and even even that we we still continue to have some mm. opposing thoughts about it's yeah but at least you guys how. are talking yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, and yeah. by the way don't don't troll raymond floro he's got a lot of people who love him and they're gonna yeah, go after no, you <laughs> yeah, yeah. but we got a bunch of folks if you're watching please you continue to tell us where you're watching from and smash that like button again you know <coughs> paulo summed it up best this is not about, this is about conveying something to the FMA community. This is, uh, we're not here to toot our own horns. We're not here to, not, we're here to bring exposure to FMA community and improve upon it. And using maybe mm -hmm. this as a platform, this incident to, so it doesn't happen again. So to help all of us. So hopefully you guys are listening, yeah. will view that as such. And, uh, but we got Eric, we got Jack, two on Jack, we got Dan. We got Brad Craig, uh, Brian Rodriguez, Mark Warner. I'm going to get this light here for a second. It's blinking. Sure, sure. We got um, Brother Tim, um, Jason Ward, and uh, Tim I.M., Datu Tim. <laughs> and what uh, Jack? Both had helped to grow. All right. Thank you for those kind words, Don Jack. You're doing pretty good yourself there. That'll help. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, we could do better. Uh, I believe that there's. Uh oh, don't even. Ooh. Oh, Maestro Ray. What is going on, Lim Bronco? Hey, oh, I am. What so... is up, my man? So, hey. Oh, oh my God. Bye. Could you just tell? Can you do me a huge favor, uh, GM? Of course. Please? Of course, the could, you please, could you please tell the community that I've been the only one privileged to have interviewed you? Could you could you tell well, it? That is apparent. Nothing that is apparent. There's no need for endorsement. The proof is in the puddings, right? You see me anywhere? <laughs> you see a podcast with me anywhere? No man. Only uh, the uh, the Brad Pitt of the FMA, Dim Branco. Oh, this man. is my gosh. I, man, I oh. like I had no idea you were doing it. I mean, like I your nephew, how kind of Paulo to like insert you in here. So I'm not sure if you if Paulo, you know, by the way, I hope you've been well. I'm not sure if Paulo oh. uh filled you in on what's going on. Yeah, but, okay. No oh, offense, man. huh? But I agree with those guys. A uh, uh, non Filipino cannot lead an FMA system, huh? It's a family system, okay? Unless there is one avenue, okay? There's one avenue. If you want to lead FMA, okay, you just make it like that, like that. You, uh, you know, you make a half white, half Filipino, and then boom, bloodlines, diba? Okay. No problem, Dean Franco. You that uh, you have merit. <laughs> Dean Franco. <laughs> Dean Franco. Oh, you have merit, but you just don't have the blood. It's okay. It's a family. Okay, right? You cannot. It's not the it's end of okay, the world. man. You can be a you can be a associate. You know? Or a steward. You just be associate a associate. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, okay, okay. But you have to understand. Okay, if you are not a Filipino and you do not have the blood, mm. eh, there is no. Don't lead a system. Okay. Call it something else. It does go not do even some, go do another martial art. I mean, go do yeah. play golf, play badminton. No, you're not like that, Dana man. Oh, not like that. I'm, I'm not saying to quit. I'm just <laughs> saying you cannot leave because you don't have the blood. But what okay, about but me the... running the FMA discussion where I interview people and I try to give people a platform that maybe never had the opportunity to be heard and bring females up and all that, despite our best efforts? What should I not be doing? It? Oh. No, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Oh, that's okay. It's a fun dust, you know. Anyway, I have to go. I have to go. Eh? Hey, well, great seeing you. Thank you so much. I, I, I hope you've been well. I'm okay, Dean. I got the COVIDs, but uh, it's okay. I take that uh, ivermectin. Huh? It's good for you, horse. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Folks, yeah, I'm foggy. <laughs> I can't figure that light out. Okay, I'm sorry. Wow, I don't. You got. I didn't know you had your uncle back around. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he's here. He's here he for just a while. popped in. I think he maybe saw that you were gone, and he, you know, he didn't want to, you know, and he. We were just. Oh, talking. yeah, I was, I was. I was listening to what he had to say. I mean, I, I honestly, I don't. I don't agree. Yeah, I don't agree. You know, he said I it think. was okay though. I lead that. It's okay that I lead. FMA discussion. He didn't have a problem with that. Well, isn't that just like a Filipino to give you permission to do the thing that you're already doing that you're completely responsible for? So, I mean, that's fine. I mean, if he wants to claim some sort of authority over you about this, uh, it's just very Filipino of him. My gosh. But I'm glad, mm -hmm. you know, he thought so, it was okay. So we, do you think we covered the answer or not? Do you think we should go move into the greater subject at hand? What do you think? Yeah, I think I think we should. I think we should. Um, but you know, the, the the broader subject here is, and I'd love to hear uh, the community's perspective on this. Is because I know, like, ain't nobody in the comment section not carrying a grudge either. Okay, mm. <laughs> let's be real. Ain't nobody perfect. All right. All you guys, there's something you're holding on to, but I think at the very least you have a willingness to resolve these things. So, and me too, me too. You know, there's some people that I'm like, you know, screw that guy. He hurt, he hurt me. But, you know, mm -hmm. truthfully, there isn't anybody in my past, um, well, well, maybe with the exception of one person, that uh, I, I wouldn't be open to some form of a discussion to. And I think that's what... Um, I think that's what FMA needs, man. 
And that's what FMA needs more yeah, examples of, of people rebuilding bridges. No, and absolutely. And here's the thing too, and, and that's something I want to piggyback off because I have my notes here. And that's actually like when we look at the past in FMA, like these burnt bridges or like you know, sanctions within or is uh, under an umbrella, system umbrella, or they won't talk yeah. this one. But, and that's something I don't want to replicate. Like, I'm trying to break that cycle through FMA by bringing, well, first the PTK guys. I'm going to do a thing with KI people, which Ray Floro is going to be part of and all that. Because Oh, that's great. It's so stupid to have, when they're all under one sun, to have all these yeah. planets just be, you know, I mean, like, there, there's got to be a better way. So I don't want to repeat history by, yeah. um, uh, by uh, you know, just dismissing those guys and not hearing them and coming to a resolution. I want the June Paul show to do well. I they, don't. Why do you want that show to look? Come on, be they, real. I don't want their show to do well. Here's what. Okay, let me. Okay, hear me out. Why? <laughs> okay, because I had, okay, it's multi. Okay. So here's why. Okay. I think they have potential to do to be better or to better our community if they do it with integrity. I think the potential is there. I don't think that last episode should I don't think that should be the example, I'm gonna be honest. However, and here's why I went to Florida and they when I went to Florida to see Dwight Woods, they took me out. They came and picked me up, they were very hospitable. I mean, just really, really good to me for the time I was down there. And then, you know, unfortunately, this incident. So I think there's some things they do well. They could do well or do better. But I think they have potential to basically be an asset in our community. Um, yeah, I guess so. I guess. I mean, so. I don't want to. There's, so many, there's so many out there. There's so many out there I would much rather support, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. FMA Pulse, uh, you. Uh, yeah, that FMA yeah. Pulse is dope. Those guys yeah. are great. I love yeah, FMA Pulse. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Sticks, and, Sticks and Blades podcast. Yeah. Um, and there's just a bunch of like little, you know, seedlings that I wish we could all cultivate together. But uh, well. but the thing, right. So my theme is I don't want to replicate this passive. Like, nope, we don't associate with them. We don't talk to yeah, them. Yeah, that's true. If You're you right. do... I'm gonna have to, you know, I might have to like let you go because of your affiliation yeah. with them. Like, I don't want that. I don't. That's not helping. Yeah. The community. That's not. Well, at the same time, at the same time, these are systems, right? We're talking about podcasts and media outlets. No, but I'm also talking. No, about no one's real systems too, and I'm I'm using okay. I'm using example, but mostly, more importantly, definitely systems, right? You know. Yeah. Um, I think that's changing. Actually, I think I think it's I think we're just in different times, you know, and I think I think one of the greater contributions to it, which I kind of realized immediately, one of my first mandates was like to grow the uh, to grow the potential student base across mm -hmm. the board. Right. Because when in, in, a, in a famine situation, people are going to fight over food and they're going to be really brutal about it. But the more food. Uh, there is the more interest there is in Filipino martial arts, the less likely people are going to want to, you know, uh, be cannibalistic towards one another. Sure. So that that was that was uh, that was a it, it, it continues to be a big part of my mandate, and I'm lucky that I have something like Funker Tactical and the and the connections that I've made in the past and the ability to travel to sort of show a more palatable representation of what Filipino martial arts can be and how it can serve mm -hmm. the tactical community. Um, and by the way, if I can go off on a tangent, that, like that's one of the sure. most common mistakes that Filipino martial arts instructors make when they get the opportunity to present what they know to law enforcement, military, and armed uh, you know, professional security um, is that they, they tend to want to show off, right? They tend to want to promote the mm -hmm. art and it tends to be like a self-serving endeavor Instead yeah. of trying to identify what they actually need and then delivering only the elements of your system that meet those needs, right? And so for me, there, there is a lot, you know, when I meet these tactical guys and they're like, oh, you do, you do FMA? I'm like, yeah, I do FMA. And they're right. like, oh, so you do all that fancy stuff? And I'm like, yeah, I love that fancy stuff. But look, I also do this other stuff that's not so fancy and that's more mm -hmm. direct and humor. Mm -hmm. And I can show you some things, you know, and, and we can touch hands. And then they're like, oh, I kind of like that because I think a lot of these guys, um, 
uh, a lot of them have a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to what the traditional martial arts path um, can actually provide. And I think that has a lot to do with their past, you know, like maybe an Aikido or a Taekwondo instructor was, it was sort of over promising what they're actually able to deliver. And then they have that epiphany. And sometimes that's a very traumatic event. I got my ass kicked and I thought my Wing Chun was going to save me. Uh, you know, things like that, things like that. And so I think the more uh, instructors take it upon themselves to really listen to their clients, right, their patrons, and, and, and to treat them less like students, right? Um, you know, the, the student teacher, the, the, the master student relationship is sacred. But sometimes it's not always appropriate. It's not mm. always appropriate to, to, to treat a seven year old walking into your dojo with behavior problems in the same way a grown ass man who's just gone through a traumatic event. It's, you cannot spread the same sensibility and start getting right. him to do friggin', you know, Sinawali when it's like, yo, brother just got robbed. Like maybe. Yeah, let's, let's, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe let's, yeah. Or, or yeah, let's ease that in, right? And maybe yeah, let's right, present right, right. Sinawali not as a. Trust me, do this for 10 years and then you yeah, will be okay. No, no, I'm saying priority stuff or stuff right? that could be right at the yeah. moment. You know, yeah. so no, I, I, I just got I just got arrows, I guess got targets from Tuhan Jack Latore because he knows what's up. Uh, Tuhan Jack learns under Tuhan Bill McGrath, who runs an incredible in my estimation. <laughs> I mean, this guy has the most detailed and accurate uh curation of what the Pekiti system actually oh is. I, I would put, you know, Tuhan Philip right, right, you know, pretty close, but Tuhan Bill mm -hmm. has that. And yet, even though he has a depth and breadth of Pekiti Tertia, he does come from some sort of a, a you know, a, an enforcement of law background. Court. Right, yeah. Right, Where, mm -hmm. whereby um, he needed to distill these concepts. Yeah, and so he passed that sensibility on to his two hunts. Look at his articles. Look at the articles he has. I mean, like I wrote an article about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let me send you. An article. I wrote an article. I know. I know. Like that's great. I I could be like uh, I have. Um, God, I got foot. I, I have two kids. sticks in one hand, a karambit on my elbow, and then how do I navigate through two hundred Let me yeah, send I wrote you an it. article about. It. <laughs> Let me send you. Yeah. In eighty six, <laughs> actually, yeah. I wrote an article. That's no, funny. But, no. <laughs> But no, much no, of what I, I I totally agree with you. So, but far as you know, I guess getting into what our perspective on you know the whole thing where Americans like, like and, and it's it's interesting you brought up Bill McGrath because look at Bill McGrath, an American, and look at how he runs that organization. You know what I mean? Look, you know what I mean? He runs it incredibly, incredibly well. Look at his reps. Look how they act accordingly how they behave i mean now there's an American and not thing. not with an iron fist either right no, no you, you know right, exactly two hundred bills guys don't behave because two hundred bill tells them to behave right right no it's it's, it's, it's a lead by example trickle no, down yeah, that trickled yeah. down they saw right. how we acted therefore they emulated right. what they were exposed to so, you know why that works steve what's that it's because they're men they're grown ass men and women, <laughs> you know, they're not seven year olds following, you yeah. know, Mrs. Smith's rules about how to go to the bathroom safely in elementary school. But much of the example, though, here's an American running a FMA system and you're trying to tell me he's not doing it well. I mean, come on now. So the, so go, so going back to the topic there that was presented uh, that we were that initial of course, prompted this podcast is that obviously Americans, non Filipinos, can run an FMA organization and can do it well. So, what, what say you? So, my my this is is what I what I think about that. I think some people are short sighted, and I think they think in terms of uh, a linear pattern, whereas the nature of this thing is actually cyclical, right? So, yes, two on bill. Caucasian, male, American, mm. not a Filipino. Does he have Filipino students? Yes, he does. Does he have Filipino students in the Philippines? Yes, he does. Are those guys going to take the good things about what Tuhan Bill taught them 
and infuse the culture that is in their blood and uh, born from their experience into the next generation of students, yes, they will. Sure. So when you think about what these guys are trying to say, it's very short-sighted and they're not thinking generationally. And this is very evident because the folks who say, I will give my lineage, I will hand over my lineage of this art to my son, despite and admittedly him being a piece of shit, right? That's a, there, there's a, first of all, I respect that. It's a family system. A family system is a family mm -hmm. system. I get it. But, but it's very self-serving and is selfish and it is purposefully destructive to the value of what this system can actually deliver to society should they choose to think in these generational cyclical patterns instead of this linear self-serving one that is a short flight path how many filipino martial arts systems have already died and disappeared because of that because, of that, because it's because their offspring didn't propagate it or spread it or do anything right. with it so here we're right. already so in other words, I brought up issues before how if we don't get the youth involved and all that, some systems will die. And I already know some of the systems that are going to go tank. And it's sad. Sure. Now, if we adopt this mentality of like handing off just to Filipinos and offspring, that is going to further perpetuate the extinction yeah. of some of these systems. So yeah. yes, we are taking questions, Chad. Um, so that's going to even further go yeah. down that so i and let's be pragmatic let's be pragmatic dean what are you handing down you know this ain't friggin apple stocks that you're giving to your son I mean, <laughs> you're not giving him property true, right i mean exactly you're, you're, what are you handing down to like, handing down. oh thank you uh okay well thanks for the system what what's this worth yeah we're not, <laughs> how we're can not i hand, license this logo come on we're not, uh, not handing down bitcoin right <laughs> <laughs> right which by the way is about to reach thousand? its new all-time high 64 uh, yeah, it, it was hovering at 64. It's about to, ooh, yeah, it's at 64, 64, 184. We're very close to new. I'm waiting for Ethereum two to take off. God, I it's wait. going to end of year ten thousand dollar Ethereum minimum. Man, I tell you, those of <laughs> you who haven't gotten to crypto yet, you might want to think about it. I know. I know. Wow, <laughs> what a diversion! Right? Yeah. So, all right. Sorry, folks. I gotta get back. I gotta get back. That was my fault. I gotta get back in context here. These are I'm going against my own uh, my own rules here. So, getting back to that. So, yeah. So, go ahead and finish. I think it's ridiculous, non phil that they can't lead a system. Yeah, and, and, uh, but I will maintain. I respect that perspective. I kind yeah. of get it. You want to keep a family system, a family system. But these guys don't understand that that currency has been devalued. That currency was, speaking of crypto, right? That currency has gone through <laughs> such a ridiculous hyperinflation that it is, oh, it's no longer of value. It was of value when we had a fear of uh, a rival village attacking mm. ours and we had to right. protect it. That had value, right? And so therefore that currency of a family system had value. And And these days, of what value is it really other than for you know egotistical selfish reasons because because what are you really what are you really in <laughs> what what do you what is that son that daughter inheriting but more than likely a whole bunch of baggage a whole bunch right? of baggage with no students because maybe with they no students involved. yeah maybe some <laughs> debt on a bunch of equipment and artifacts that might be more meaningful to the students who were dedicated to that? Class. Who were dedicated as opposed to the child who right was into other things and just didn't who couldn't care less. Seriously. Yeah, who couldn't care less. So, like, I get it. I respect it. I respect mm. the idea of this. Yeah, that's handing fair. down the lineage to the bloodline. I cannot. That's inarguable. If that is what you want, that is what you want. But let's be clear about what is actually happening when you do that under these conditions. Right, meritocracy wins, and it will ensure the propagation of this art. And if you really love this system, you will deal with the momentary pain of not giving it to your son who may not want it, and giving it to the guy or girl who's really hungry, who and really wants to spread it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And then maybe down the line there might be something yeah, um, that can be handed down. But look, but look at look at look at Pikiti Tersha. Mm. Look at Pikiti Tertia. 
What does the Grand Tuhan of Pekiti Tusha have to actually hand down to his son? What he has to hand down to his son are a bunch of people who love the Grand Tuhan, who love the art of Pekiti Tusha Kali, and who have been alienated by this very same idea right. of handing down a system to somebody undeserving of it. Undeserving. Because, undeserving, yeah. Right, you're, you're going to hand it down to somebody who I've never even seen fight, you know, who by all accounts is subpar to, you know, he, he let's just say he's not the primary candidate to represent not the with with his son, to be honest. I know if there's a son in Bob, yeah, yeah and, and he's the one slated to okay to lead it. But um, those in the world of Bikini Tersha understand that he's unfit. And, and the hope, the ideal is that, excuse me, that the community will continue to raise him until he earns the title. Right? It would be like sort of an, like, uh, an honorific mm. titular rank. But with this division, it, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, There's, what's going to happen? You have to with, fix the fra fractures, fractures first. You got to fix the fractures first, or attempt yeah. to. Yeah, and you know? and that's what Pikiti Tersha is doing yeah. outside of the control of one person. It's happening. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do another one. I I got as you know. I mean, Tuan Bill, Tuan Jared, and Tuan Phil. I, I'm going to do another one. Some didn't get back to me, you know. I, I yeah. Tried, but I definitely there's enough Tuans out there for me to do another yeah. one. And I'm get two on Mick. To get yeah, two on Mick. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I like to get him. Sure, sure. Oh, and whoever else. So I'm going to do another one. I I, I just want to do a Ki uh, one, and then I'm definitely would like to revisit the PTK for sure mm -hmm. um, and all that. But getting back to that, and just for the folks who uh, folks, if you just jumped in, like please uh, tell us where you're watching from. Hit the sm smash that like button, and if you have questions, by all means, uh, let us know. So what do you think, like? Yeah. Do you think, as far as the, and I want to tread lightly with this, but as far as the, that, some of the Filipinos don't think not should not Filipinos should not lead, you know, in an organization and all that. Do you think any of it is potentially prejudicial? Uh, no, I really don't. I'm not, I, 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 I don't think it is. No, I'm no, I don't think friend. it's uh I mean, but if 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 we boil it down and break it down enough, maybe there are some elements of it. I but I don't really think so. driving force though. No, no, I don't think so. Although, you know, there are some folks who have this like here's what I can't stand. I really can't stand all of this shit, man. I sometimes I feel like I'm the Dave Chappelle of FMA. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just gonna speak my truth. There are there are a certain group of uh, Filipinos, and uh, there was a panelist there in that podcast that we were talking about earlier who who have this like they're just so like anti colonialism, and it's it's like it, it, everything is is a generational scar from colonialism of, of the Philippines and blah 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 blah. And, and these are the guys who don't want, you know, white people leading Filipino martial arts system. And I'm like, no, an American Indian. You want to talk about cultural scars, um... <laughs> right, Dean? And and I, I think there is a there's a, a nuanced discussion to be had about, um, you know, really dealing with those, you know, generational scars, that generational trauma. But I think a lot of the people, I think it's worth think a, addressing, maybe for sure. For sure, but I think the manifestation of it is just becoming this, you know, uh, self uh, righteous. I, I think it's people who who truly lack an identity, and, and who, who who truly lack a deep connection to mm -hmm. that culture, and so they're overtly trying to, uh, and it's it's almost it's it's almost a costume for them. You know, here's an outward manifestation of what I believe our culture is supposed to feel over these past over transgressions. Decades. You know, I got you. oh, my God. You know, and the, and, and the truth that hurts them is that, you know, these dudes 
benefited and they benefited greatly yeah. from the good right and i say good without dismissing or minimalizing the tragedies that happened mm -hmm. but they did benefit they live in the united states right they live in america right <laughs> they have jobs in america they and, and they, get to, right? <laughs> they, they, they live this this beautiful life they right. are right. the right. most prosperous yeah. out of all generations they have the most opportunity out of mm -hmm. most other generations that have come before them and they want to propose this like you know fuck the white man it's garbage you. i totally they agree lack, with you. yeah they lack an authentic sense of who they are and and, mm -hmm. and they're they're creating caricatures and and they're bastardizing uh this this movement i believe there's a there's a girl from you know it's an organization called survival arts which is an which is a, a Piquiti Tertia affiliate. And okay. they're very much into like, let's get in touch with our ancestral selves and uh, let us purify Piquiti Tertia as the indigenous I'm art of the Philippines. Fighting arts or? Uh, survival arts. No, yeah. I'm sorry. So I, 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 I don't want to slander them, but their founder mm -hmm. is half white. And that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? That's how ridiculous things have gotten. You have somebody who is half Caucasian, right, leading this, like, anti-colonialist uh, or this post-colonialist liberation. And, it, and you know, it's like white males shouldn't lead Filipino martial arts systems. Bitch, you half white. What the hell? You know? <laughs> yeah, this doesn't, oh, I'm not you so, bet it's crazy I'm not familiar. The viable arts. Here's the other thing, too. So that's nothing that's just I crazy. Piggyback of your question. Yeah. So in other words, I'll say, well, non-Filipinos um, shouldn't they? But but when I look at the non, like the ones who are saying this sometimes, they're Filipinos who live in America now. Okay, you were born there, but you came over there. So are you American? Are you Filipino? Or I mean, I mean, yes, you're you're definitely Filipino, but are you Filipino American now? Or are you Yeah? Hey, there's um addressing that. There's a white dude in the Philippines. His name, his name is Joseph Elephant. Joseph right? Elephant, okay. Right, he runs, uh, he starts He started his own organization. Young man, right, right? I fought him, fought him a few times in the Philippines. He looks like a white guy, right? Straight up, and he is. This dude has been living in the Philippines all his life and speaks fluent Tagalog. But on the surface, he just looks like a, a Caucasian guy, right, doing FMA. Mm. And so, to the same point, if you had a dude who looked like me, who was born in the United States, and I was completely detached and out of touch from my culture, what right do I have? What claim do I have more than you or more than Joseph to lead a Filipino martial arts system? No argument here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes no damn sense to me. It may, and, and considering that Filipino women are so damn hot. <laughs> That we the the culture is pretty much interbred with all the other cultures, and they make some. You, have you ever seen a half Filipino, half Irish baby, or a half Filipino, half Scottish? Oh man, there's just some beautiful, you know, like Joe, half black, half Joe? Filipino. Oh my god, so beautiful, beautiful. Joe Elephant, that's his name. Yeah, Joseph Elephant, Elephant Tali with an F, not a PH. I wonder if he'd be interested in coming on. He sounds like an interesting character to have on. He should. I'll go talk to him about it. Oh, I appreciate and, that. It's, he just yeah. you have an interesting story to share. Yeah, yeah and his dad trained. I fought his dad in the Philippines, too. I fought both of them in the Philippines. Family yeah. affair? A family oh, affair? Oh, yeah. And they love, they love, love, love. Joseph? Hollow is Mestizo, yes. He's a, he's Halo Halo. Halo Halo. <laughs> yes, yes. No, but you know, yeah, he looks... Uh, he looks, he, looks, he looks like a white guy. He'd be yeah. interested. Wow, sounds something interesting to have on. Yeah, I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. And, wow. and he is surrounded, friends, he's surrounded by amazing talent. You know, he, he a village raised up that young man. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In, in, including folks like you know, Elric and uh, Elric and. and <laughs> Elric, my man. Elric is, uh, you know, the Jundis uh, brothers um, and the, uh, you know, Master Andrew Spera, 
I love that guy, Elric. Oh my God, Elric's man. Um, not all Filipinos are hot. Half breed ones are definitely upgraded genetic. <laughs> <laughs> you, not all. That yes. guy, man, Joe. That guy is a mess, man. That guy is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Guru Joe is like a true. And by the way, I. I Guru Joe leaves like bottles of whiskey at the boudoir, and I always say, "Okay, bro, we're we're, we're gonna save it until you come back." Uh, Guru Joe, thank you for this. <laughs> oh, incidentally, Guru Joe, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. That is freaking! I can't right? believe that they. But you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Dean? <laughs> yeah, no. um, so, Dean, can I can I ask you a question? Absolutely, and, of course. And then uh, I'm gonna go grab another drink of Guru Joe's. Um, and I can talk to free. the audience while you go again. Yeah. Okay. Do that. Um, okay, Dean. Do you feel as a as a uh, and I'm just referring to Caucasian, not with no disrespect to your actual bloodline, right? Because you you know you look like friggin' Brad Pitt. Um, <laughs> do you do you feel um, an insecurity? Or, uh, or any sense of undeservingness or unworthiness to start Franco Kali. I'll leave you with that. I'm, I'm going to run right back. Please answer that and then fill me up. Sure. You want me to wait till I answer it till you come back? Guess not. Ah, uh, Franco Kali. Huh. Uh... I would call a Connecticut colleague. I don't think I would use my name. No, I think I would call it Connecticut. Any ideas, by all means, uh, let me know. This is something I have thought of doing and I have a group called Connecticut Kali um, and all that, but I haven't really branded it. Been so busy with here with the channel interviews. I haven't really, yeah, uh, pushed it. So I, started, answer? so I started to answer the question. So um, I would, de so I have my own brand. I, I don't push it though. And I, and it's probably just due to um, all my, uh, you know, the, the interviews, the training, the privates, the teaching, I just haven't really pushed like a name brand per se. Roger Agulis yeah. uh, has been telling me for months now to do it. I just haven't. However, Roger's great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. However, I don't, I wouldn't call it Franco. I would call it Connecticut Kali something. I just, I think I would be a little reserved, I think, to you, yeah. um, my name and not to say I couldn't do it or that maybe that's wouldn't be a bad idea. I just think I, I would have initial reservations using my name. Yeah. It's a good, um, it's a good thought, Dean. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody who I no longer associate with, uh, we had a great discussion about that in that when you call it last name Kali or last name Krav Maga, mm. the tendency is for that to die off when you die, you know. But when you come up with like you know Revolution Arnis mm. or, or, or 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 something, it it doesn't it doesn't die when you die, and it allows you to scale. It allows you to create a community of amazing instructors without going. Yeah, oh, is yeah. your last name Franco? Yeah. So it's a, it's a good it's a good idea. It's a good idea not to call it your last name. It's a good idea not to call it Rubio Kali yeah, or Kali de Leon. Just comfortable, like Franco Kali. You know, then you got to get the question. Well, <laughs> you know, who was your, you know, would you, you know what I mean? Then you go through all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have um, native blood, right? Yeah. What, what, uh, from what uh, nation? From the uh, upper nation in the New Hampshire main area. Most of them fled to Canada because they were just getting trumped or they joined what the Iroquois. That? Iroquois, Cree. Well, uh, well they uh, joined. And here's what it, not to go off topic. Here's what kind of happened with the Northeast American Indian tribes. So, how many, what percentage do you think died, like died? If you were to take the Northeast tribes, when I say Northeast, I'm talking about, let's say, from New York, New Jersey up. So, what do you think percentage died? From from disease when the white man came, or just Everything. from. Like, what do you, so what do you Whoa. think the percentage died and do from what? From guessing. Uh, I I would guess something like eighty five to ninety percent died primarily from tribal warfare and uh, disease. All of the above. 
between 80 and 90. So when you had the small pockets that were left, they A, fled to Canada, or they joined Mohegans, Iroquois, the bigger tribe. So when you look at the, right. in other words, when you look at the, um, in Connecticut, you have the, uh, uh, um, what, oh my gosh, the, um, was, oh man, I can't believe I can't, uh, Mohegan, this, the uh, gambling centers there, Mohegan's Center, um, and all that, where they have the fight. In the the casinos? The casinos, right. This yeah. word was escaping me. Um, yeah. Though, like, now, if you were to tell me, you know, those are uh, 100%, you know, uh, like there's the Rhode Island tribe, the uh, Pequots and all that, that they're 100% Pequot. Very hard to believe that just because right. when they got trampled, they went to go join and there was inner. So, uh, yeah, Mohegan Sun, Chris. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't uh, generate that. Um, some poker right so, but yeah, not to get off top about the Indians, but yeah, but see, I would, yes, yeah, so I, I wouldn't use Frank. Yeah. Though, but. Well, I, yeah, I like the idea of using icons and symbols from, from tribes yeah. and, and, and blending them. I so, I think, I think it looks great. I do, right? Too. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> What's Connecticut? So, somebody's like? laughing with your comment. Shay <laughs> Gladys is laughing that you call me Brad Pitt. <laughs> Jeez, it's true. what's up gm darren t-bone yeah. guru yeah. joe mia bell yo mia bell's uh um i, I don't know the status but florida right? um florida if i'm not mistaken florida yeah yeah that's a very uh, they're like the uh the brad pitt and angelina power couple of fma oh that's right oh yeah yeah, oh, kind of, uh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. yeah um you know black thorn or black horn sundugan kali yeah, yes, very it, talented. It, it, yeah, very uh, talented. Talented um, sword maker. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And and I, I feel like this guy. I mean, let me make sure I got this right. Is it? It's, it's worth Kuhu? a look into this guy. I'm not mistaken? Yeah, Mia, Mia, tell, talk to us about this. Uh, Diane. Damn it! People have all their different freaking names. I'm pretty sure that's Ma Maya, Mila, yeah, Mila. Yeah. What? What did I say? Mia. Sorry. You said me, yeah, it's me. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Kaya, yeah. Kaya, Kahuda, Kaya Kahuda. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like he's he's uh, he's undergoing this like um uh, uh this very pure self discovery through the Filipino martial arts and creating blades. Mm -hmm. And I don't often comment on his stuff, but I'm like, there's something happening there. It's very, very, very beautiful to observe. There's so many amazing stories. Right, happening across the board in the in Filipino martial arts. People trying to find their identity. People trying to find their voice. People trying to find where they can make a contribution. And it's it's mm -hmm. beautiful. I want to support. And this is why I don't think like you know that you know Paul's show deserves any sort of attention. There are so many untold stories in the yeah, Filipino martial arts that are far more deserving. Mm -hmm. Right. That <laughs> I would much rather spend you know, four or five hours talking to a guy and talking to him about, you know, you know, effective social media communication and, and you know, camera angles to support mm -hmm. somebody like Kayan than to support um, this, the, the, the toxic element and, in FMA. It was just, it wow, there's way too much to do. And I totally get what you're saying. Like, you know, who deserves yeah. the attention based on what they've done, what they represent and all that. Right. But I look at how it deserves, sounds so dirty. I, know, I, I, mean, I, I don't want to sound like, who, beautiful who, shall go, who has earned my attention? Gladys, I think I, I think Gladys is saying that you're beautiful to look at. Absolutely. Sorry to interrupt you. What were you saying? <laughs> so, um, is that like when I lead? Like I feel I have to lead by example. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because of where of what I'm trying to push, the agenda I'm trying to push, um, and all that, and so. If I don't leave by example, I say, "Oh man, don't watch those guys. They're they're it, it's garbage." And they, they, I, I don't feel like yeah. I'm leaning. I'm being hypocritical. I'm not leaning by because one that mm. um, far as the mission statement is that I want the whole community to come up, be better, and all that. So if I don't put that foot forward, or if it's skewed and people can see inconsistency, I don't know how that's going to look. And so I try to be careful that whether but it's a fine line because obviously as a result of that incident, obviously there, there was 
emotions that came out of me regarding that. I mean, who, who yeah. you know what I mean? So it was a tough, um, it's been a tough road where, like you said, when we started out with, don't, don't mistake my kindness, you know, for you know, as a weakness. weakness, you know? So it's a yeah. tough, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know. Hey, Mila wants to talk about the subject of women in FMA. I've got some pretty strong opinions about that. So um, what are you seeing here? Yeah, she wants to talk about that. I, I here the long and short of it is y'all ought to reclaim it because it belongs to you. Mm. And we can get into a whole period whole conversation about that. Period of learning, we're right. all imperfect. Yeah, yeah, we can't. Right, oh, right, right. in regards to the show specifically, shit. I was talking about like the divine feminine in its place. Oh, yeah. I was wondering. I was, wondering about, I was, trying to think where to I was going a little too deep. I'm sorry. Did you mean <laughs> no. in regards to the show, the women? The role yeah, the yeah. Show? I was looking for. I didn't see women in there. So. <laughs> but uh, all right. So get back to. All right, so what do you, all right, we kind of, we've been, you know, no fault of anybody's going over, a little over different things here, even from Bitcoin to American Indians. <laughs> uh, right. But getting, you know, again, getting back um, for, for the folks that just jumped in, we both agree non Filipinos absolutely can lead an organization and do it well. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. 100%. 100%. Right. And, uh, right. And to think otherwise, when there's been valid proof thereof, Bill McGrath being a good example is Jared Mahomes, another good example. Just short-sighted, in my opinion, or not looking at the totality of everything, but yeah. handing down. Yeah, they're looking at it from a short-sighted linear yeah. path instead of the cyclical nature of what martial arts is. Really. Yeah. Okay. And that's yeah. So, uh, but and then in addition to that, how do we? Oh. How do we improve upon it? How do we is it is it worth spending the time to change the lens of people who don't feel that way? Do you think it's wasted energy? I and and here's here's where it gets a little bit contradictory. Right? Because a Caucasian man can't make these claims. Let's just be honest, right? Mm. A, a Caucasian guy, uh, being a, a straight white male has wonderful benefits i hear uh, but in terms of uh, of the social <laughs> as far as the social landscape these days right uh, it's yeah. um it's you know rightfully there, there are some sensitivities that, that we need to be aware of and, and if and, and I'll, I'll be honest if a, if a if a caucasian male straight up and you know put a flag on this and be like you know mm. i would I would support that opinion based on the merit of that opinion, but I think a lot of people will find that unpalatable. And so um, when I say it, and when I make a strong enough point, when people like, uh, you know, Elric say it, and they believe in, in that there's a nuance to this conversation, mm. but there is meritocracy ought to be, uh, the the primary engine that drives Filipino martial arts moving forward, then it then uh, I think the the message spreads a lot quicker, and mm -hmm. and under no uncertain terms, if you are a, a, a Caucasian from North America or, or Europe, and you dedicate your life to this, and your passion is apparent. And demonstrable this art is as much yours as it is mine even more so i'm a newcomer to this yeah let's you know maybe five years now approaching five years deep into to the filipino martial arts and i see people like that too tim hartman who have spent the better part of you know two decades maybe maybe, maybe uh, more yeah, yeah when i see someone like jared Rihangi, when i see someone like tuhan bill I mean, mm. it's something like Tuhan, uh, Philip Gelina, Dieter Canuto, and, and all the amazing representatives of, of the Filipino martial arts in Russia, France, and Germany, and all across yeah, Europe. Yeah. Right? When I see dedication from the Australians and the South Americans, right? Uh, the Canadians, the Americans who have been doing this for decades, mm. uh, I, I cannot in good conscience claim this art to be more mine than it is theirs. And so what I can do is support Agreed. them and I want to empower them. Yeah. I want to empower them because this is going to be so good 
for the art as a whole. And I think the Filipinos who have insecurities about losing control of FMA really have no idea. They have no idea. The ancestral home of Filipino martial arts is going to always be in the Philippines. There's always going to be a reason to visit the home country to study this art. There's mm. always going to be masters worthy of our patronage and our loyalty in the sure. Philippines. I have no insecurity about FMA in the Philippines. You have folks there, you know, like uh, Rene Tongson, Rodel Dagoho, yeah. uh, Nick Elazar. You, there is no sh master Henry Espera. And my perspective is limited. There are so many of them. I have no insecurity about where FMA headquarters is and where its heart and soul is. It's yeah. in the Philippines. Yeah, I don't think anybody else does either. I totally agree with you. Right? You know, None. Um, it belongs in the Philippines. And because we can be very sure of that, then we are, we are more willing to share it openly. Yeah. And I think the people who are detached from this sensibility have an insecurity to want to hold on to this thing yeah. that's never going to go away. Like protect, yeah, that kind uh, of emotional attachment and all that. But here's the thing that I do find troubling. When people, when for those, not from what you're saying, but for those who are saying it doesn't belong, uh, non Filipinos should not head all that. Okay, we all know through the through the great work of Dan Asana and others that the Western Hemisphere has brought <laughs> has spread FMA and made it sure. in film popularity. The United States was a huge stronghold focal point for that evolution. Right. So how can you say that non Filipinos should not when the country that really has propagated this. Well, I mean, Dan Asano, it's true. Remy Presses, you know, Leo Gahe, the big three. GM Bobby, you know, so, they all left the Philippines. That's what I mean. So how can you say then and not who are they teaching? They're teaching mostly non filipinos right. So now you're gonna say this. So to me, I find an aspect of hypocrisy. Somewhat. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, it's a, it's hypocrisy with insecurity. That's a deadly cocktail for toxicity. You know? That could be the definition of toxicity, right? Yeah. Hypocrisy um, <laughs> with insecurity. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, Dean. You're absolutely right. Um, so that's that's my troubling aspect. Of it. Now, like you mentioned, handing down. Okay, no, I don't care. I'm going to hand it. You know, I I, I, I get that. You. I get that they want to hand it down to their love, their offspring. I, I get that. Whether right. they deserve it, they should get it or not. Yeah. Understand it. Understand like you do. Understand it. Yeah. Um, and, and you know what? It's it's almost like a no win situation. If you if you play that podcast back, you're like, well, if you're if you want to talk about meritocracy, but you're still not going to get the lineage because you don't belong to the bloodline, you should start your own system. Okay. I'm going to call that system Franco Kali. Uh, I'm going to call it. Then, Franco American. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk it. We'll call it like, I, I don't know, uh, Totem Pole, Connecticut. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll call it something. But then it's this, th those same people will attack it. You know, of course. Who are you, who yeah. are you to start your yeah, own system? Right, right. That's yeah. yeah, who are you? Critical. Like, where's your lineage? Who are you to go and, <laughs> and so create your own system? What right do you have to start your own system? Yeah. It's yeah. hypocritical. It's a no win situation and it's hardly worth the discussion. These people are toxic. They're absolutely toxic. But I, I I I don't want to be misunderstood because there are people like like Elric mm. um, and um, Celestino Macachor and Rene Tongson, um, you know, who 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 say things like, you know, Kali is a, is an invented word um, in North America, and I, I fully respect their position, bro. Oh, yeah. I fully respect their role within the spectrum of things to be mm -hmm. historically correct and to infuse that, right? I, I, I lack the knowledge to, to have an intelligent debate with, with them about it. I can talk about feelings, mm -hmm. but those people, um, let's call them historians. Uh, uh, Felipe Jocano, Hocano, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. another one, right? Kalis Magani, he's another one. Uh, these guys who are who want to preserve um, historical truths and authenticity, mm -hmm. even as it becomes transported into other lands, man, those guys are needed. 
Uh, and I would hate for those guys to be lumped in to the same category as folks like, you know, the Posada brothers and Paul, who are just like, you know, um, you know, hi hypocrites and, and, and yeah. insecure folks, right? Uh, and that blend into toxicity. I think there's no place for that. Right. And I'll call them out. I'll call them out by name. They can call me out by name. I don't mind. Um, but that's, is that you? It was, which is funny because it wasn't going through. Oh my gosh, it was me. I apologize for that, folks. I didn't know. Um, Apollo Ladra. Oh, cool. oh I'm trying to get him on the show. So, um, oh, two on Apollo. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, See, yeah, two on yeah, Apollo yeah. is a great example of somebody who, like, uh, Aikali, uh, what I love about Aikali is that they infuse so much uh, culture and language and history mm -hmm. into their representation. Well, I, I think he's doing. Oh, it's amazing. Stuff, right? I'm, yeah, I, yeah I, I would recommend Aikali. He's a, yeah, he, he has yeah. his place within the spectrum of, of, of PTK. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, so yeah. for getting back, you know, I agree. I mean, it's just that that's like, you know, words. Uh, I respect everybody's opinion on how you feel, but when there's an aspect of hypocrisy comes into it, then it kind of gets tough to, yeah, you know, promote that or stand behind that or alienate or agree right. with you or align myself with you because it's just it's difficult. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna bash you. I'm just gonna not understand your sure. point of view, and um, so this is why I'm looking forward to the folks who are just jumping in regarding mm. why we're doing this from um is that i definitely want to give them guys all an opportunity to yeah. talk to me and then and see where it goes so here, here's another thing dean if i can mention something else sure is that um this whole idea that i you know that we speak on behalf of our systems and therefore we have to have this you know continuity of thought and a, and a mm. singularity of opinion i think it's 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 ridiculous right i say some things and I'm very closely um, connected through work with someone like Jared Pihangi, mm. right? But we're very different individuals. I think we get along well because of that. Yeah, we sorry. have opinions that are completely, you know, in, mm. in 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 misalignment. But there's something deeper about our friendship. You know what I mean? And so I think, uh, especially earlier on, right, there was a hesitance to to have a you know to have an affiliation with me because of some things that I say. I'm like, yeah. bro, that's okay. I get it. It's silly. You know, if I say, you know, I love iKali yeah. and I love PTI, and then I go, my favorite illustrissimo lineage is Tony Diego's, mm. it's like, what? Therefore, you must be a, a dickhead. And it's like, yeah. don't connect, <laughs> like, don't connect those dots, homie. You know, I'm just expressing my yeah, journey. Yeah. Sure, you know, sure. I love this art. I love that art. I like that instructor. And people are like, well, don't you know that one time that guy said that racist thing? I'm like, I'm not I'm not looking to study this system. Yeah, you're saying from afar. You know, for social studies. <laughs> right. You're not doing any care. Study. You're saying from afar, this is your what you yeah. admire. Yeah, yeah, I know. And by God, even though, you know, GT says some wacky things, you know, often mm -hmm. related to race and culture. And I'm like, yeah, please, I, I'm not that. I just, I, I just love the footwork. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah I, I'm just admiring from afar. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not doing a case study on the, on the person. Well, we're so much more than the arts that we study. Yeah, and I think right. people lose touch of that because, um, I mean, a lot of people's identities are, are solely tied to the Filipino martial arts. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But you give yourself no room. You I think, room. yeah, I think when you attach yourself that much, I think your other facets of your life are going to get severely lost in the shuffle. Or yeah. You know I mean? so exactly. I, like if I, if I take boxing lessons, I'm not insulting FMA's ability to teach me good hands. Right, you know, even though for the yeah. most part, I mean, it's not the yeah. best, but whatever. I know, like, it's like, yeah, I mean, I run the podcast, I teach, I train FMA. However, that doesn't mean that's like all I do. I mean, you know, it's, right. it's my, I guess it's what people see as my identity, but clearly it's. Yeah, well, it's, it's projection, Dean. It's projection yeah. because they so closely tie their identity 
with mm. the Filipino martial arts system that they practice. They want to do it to you and just be like, no, nah, man, I'm not like yeah. that. Sorry, more nuanced. I, I yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I like fishing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a chess man, <laughs> like playing chess by myself. Oh, oh yeah, I love chess. You know, yeah. we're we're crypto enthusiasts. There's oh, there's more God. that we can connect with. Go crypto. <laughs> <laughs> man, that XRP and that uh, SEC trial. When is that, gonna, I tell you, when that ends, I think that you're going to see a freaking maybe. Ooh, I hope. I hope. I don't think they have anything on them. I think it's a weak case. I think it's a, weak it's a very case. weak case. Yeah. You know? Jack Latore. I hate Tuhan Jack. He's always, he's like my arch nemesis. I know. He's always and posting those seminars and who he's doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's always like trying to make people you laugh know, and you know, like saying logical things. I know. The whole that. Carenza project. What is this? Who does he think? The nerve. The nerve of Tuhan. Jackler. Yeah. You know, gosh. Yeah. Always pushing, always pushing those agendas, you know. <laughs> I know, right? Unity. Oh, by the way, um, if if uh I want to throw this out there. Um women, women in FMA. Women. Uh, yes, women. I would love to have oh, a panel discussion with you. <laughs> no, just in general. Um I, I want to have a panel discussion with strong, opinionated awesome. women in FMA. I want to get real with it. I want to be able to ask questions without, you know, feeling persecuted or, or having to walk on eggshells. Because I, I think, I think it deserves it. It deserves it. I We've don't want trying, to tiptoe around. Man. I hope you do. I hope you. I hope you. Yeah. Get that. We've been. We're you know, so I was laughing at the one that you tried to do because you were so like. <laughs> you were so careful, bro. And this is what I love about you, man. I enjoyed watching you cringe throughout that. that. <laughs> I just wanted to stir the pot. I'm like, no, oh, no, gee, so ask him who the hottest you guy in FMA is. <laughs> you actually helped me through that because it kind of it de elevated my stress. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, like, okay, I've got three women yeah. here. And, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was laughing at you, but I think you know, wrong, I, and I'm just thinking like, you know, uh, Oh God. Oh God. Yeah. But I, I definitely, I, I definitely think it's, uh, it's worth discussing. And if really? I could be honest and, 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 and uh, oh, I hope they, I hope they do it. I really do. Yeah. yeah. Assemble, assemble. Um, I would, I would, and I have my ideas about who should be there, but I don't want to mansplain things. Hmm. You assemble a group. And I will ask some tough questions, and we can have a real honest discussion about oh, I, I would, women in FMA. That's great. I'll that's do it any time. I'll do it. I will do it any time. We don't. It's not a thing that needs to be planned. We can do it tonight. Uh, oh shit! I got a meeting, and like I forget. <laughs> uh, um, but we can do it later tonight. We can do it tomorrow. Assemble a panel of three, four, whatever women in FMA. I'm gonna ask some tough questions. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. It's good for real. For real, yeah. There's, there's, there's. I mean, there's some people that are watching on here. I mean, yeah. I mean, I there's I, you'll probably get, yeah. you'll get people. You get. Yeah, I mean, look, there's probably like 13 women in all of FMA. It shouldn't be that difficult. It's tough for us to get <laughs> into. I mean, like, I'm looking at a list, and like, a group, we we got, um, you know? I got a married couple coming up next Monday. So that constitutes. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I know because, that, but like, I, there's 13 women in FMA. Uh, there's no, one in every system. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, let's talk about why that is. You know, I joke about mm -hmm. it, but it's. Well, like, wait, though, are you gonna be getting non-Filipino women on there? So, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> women in FMA. I know, but women. they're not. But what if they're non-Filipino? Oh, forget about it. Just kidding. <laughs> no, especially especially if especially mm -hmm. if. Uh, I think it's really important. Um, yeah, and and I'm gonna get real with it. You know what I mean? I'm I'm gonna get real with it mm. because um, yeah, I think I think, and this is how real. <laughs> Shut up, Dean. I, no, Shut there was up. a whole joke. Man. <laughs> <laughs> of course, not Phil should be involved. I guess I'm piggybacking off our initial theme of the show here tonight. Yeah, Filipinos can't leave the system. I know, right? And and really underlying all this is can we have honest discussions about Filipino martial arts? Can we really do that? Yeah. yeah. Right? 
And I, you know, I happen to think that humor, humor is a Trojan horse for bluntness. It's mm. true, right? If we, if I got a tiptoe or if I got a gift wrap, honesty, I want to gift wrap it in laughter. So at least we can have that bridge. Yeah, at least, yeah, right. So it doesn't end. At least they're right. It can, sure. Yeah, that's sure. A good, that's a good way of putting it. Makes right. sense, right? Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. yeah. And, and, and we're going to talk about, like, I think women who, like, if you do FMA and you're a woman, like, hotness level goes up at least 17%. No, Man, I'm on. How can you not deny that? <laughs> like, a woman it's who just, does it's FMA. sexy. It's yeah, beautiful. I 100% agree. Right? 100 agree. But at the same time, you know, that's a that's a thought that I have here. We yeah. can talk about the creepy manifestation of how some people this don't like how to handle so, those thoughts, right? I tell you, it's tough for me, man, because I and like hope nobody important is watching this. It's like you know when I start doing it anyway, and I'm seeing some of these women that do FMA, and I'm just like, man, oh, it's man, beautiful. and I'm like, especially if if they can blend grace and elegance with power. And, and and I'll be real. Mm. I look at dudes the same way. <laughs> you know, there's certain knew, dudes that I'm like that. I knew, that is a handsome dude. Look at I him knew, with his shirt off. Like Mandala Rapagan, that dude swings a stick, and I'm like, I knew, I dude. knew that moved you. I knew it all yeah. along that moved. It you. moved. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I, I know that. Like if we were right. in the same room swinging sticks, would that move? Oh, Dean, come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I ain't going to retirada on you, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you engaño me. No, I'm You're just, gonna, no but. <laughs> there'll be a number a number five yeah. strike. Number yeah, five. I go five from the rear. Um, no, but listen, it's. I want to have these honest discussions. We can laugh about it uh, because it's a, it's a really, really, it's a coping mechanism. There's a lot of, there's a lot of nonsense going down. It's worth discussing. I think so. Uh, and, hey, yeah, what's going to improve it? Dialogue. Straight up, because right? there's just a lot of dudes who don't know how to act around women. Period. Like they never, they never, uh, <laughs> they Wait. never went through that phase in high school where they tried to figure it out. So like the moment a woman or they, into right. class, well, you saw me, you saw me with those three. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what I mean. It's like, oh, oh my god. I know, like, yeah. Some French. some people just don't know how to act. They don't know how to act, and they'd be like, I'm sure, I'm sure women have this, like. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet all of my Bitcoin that every woman. Wait, 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 wait. Are you ready? Are you willing to reveal how many Bitcoin you have? So no way. They, they no, might not take your just, offer. They, well, well, then let's 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 pick another crypto. But here's my bet. Just kidding. <laughs> my, my bet is that any woman who has done FMA mm. and has walked into a seminar. And I, I'm willing to bet that it's even at every seminar, they have some dude mm. who at some point, they just go inside their heads. Oh. And it's just like dudes who want to show them the right way and they're yeah, inching know, the right the inappropriateness. And it's you know like, I mean? They need to get in there and do like right hands on. I love watching I these dudes. I love watching these dudes play their whack ass category. games. And I'm like, I'm like, you dummy. Like, you don't even know. Like, you know, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't fall under that umbrella. I'm no. the size they come. So, ladies, you don't have to worry yeah. about that. <laughs> I, yeah. It'd yeah. Be like, it's I'd be in the corner. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it's true it's yeah. like dudes do yeah. and it, and it's like and in, and within the guys too right and i want women to know this within like uh, uh the guys they're just like there's like almost this like this primal who's gonna approach it first mm -hmm. to be her training partner who's gonna impress her the most uh, you know who's she gonna have lunch with i kind of feel for them though. so do i they're attractive like kind of the, what they're put under you know what i mean I, you know that i mean depending on their personality yeah. too i mean they, you know, i mean that could be so do i could be unsettling you know what i mean like and i know exactly how they feel because i am sexy as fuck and when i walk i know they're just looking at me like, mm, 
I mean, I didn't want to say it, but I, I, I agree. I mean, um, <laughs> guys always want to share wow. a shit. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. Anyway, it's, um, hey, good night. It's, uh, say good night. Oh, hi. Oh, what a cutie. Oh, my goodness. Well, hi there. How are you? YouTube. I always watch him on YouTube. Don't say that. He doesn't know I watch him on YouTube. <laughs> I'm trying to be cool, baby. Uh, he doesn't watch you on YouTube. I don't watch him. Bye bye. Night. I'm on. Night. Love you, baby. Love you, baby. Yeah. Oh, she's beautiful. <laughs> oh my God. She yeah, she's a, is she's a killer, beautiful. man. She's a killer. Anything wow. boys can do. Say it out loud. Huh? Anything boys can do. I can do better. Straight up. Good for you. Yeah. She is guys... beautiful. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm a. Uh, I'm a. Uh, I'm a closet feminist, guys. I don't want to break my. Paulo is the Pinoy Ryan Reynolds. There you go. <laughs> oh, I, want to, I want to be the Pinoy Dave Chappelle. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, I right, mean, it's been. This is awesome, dude. I know it has been, and I want to thank you so much for coming mm. on. You know, I think we handled this with diplomacy. Mm -hmm. integrity i think we did a good job on this we didn't bash we didn't name i i mean i think all in all i think well, we you handled did. it what <laughs> you did uh, i mean I people, just don't, anyway. from the get, people who watch from the beginning please let us know how we did did we handle this effectively while trying <laughs> to um make it positive no. we're here from the beginning what's going on over there? Yeah, no, thank you guys. Uh, and thank you, Dean. Let's give Dean a round of applause for doing this, man. Um, why are you so blurry? You're into my high room. Anyway. What's that? Um no, you're you're getting all pixelated. No, but anyway, Dean, I wanna I wanna extend my appreciation to you. I want everybody in the community to really I mean, man, my, my daughter kind of blew my cover. Yeah, I do watch her stuff. Um, I think you're doing a great service to the Filipino martial arts. I want you to, to remain the captain of the ship, bro. Yeah, I have to stay the course and I have to stay true to me and all that and yeah. um, and continue to lead yeah. by example what I've been doing. I can't let stuff like this set me off track and go into a um, emotional pothole and then give them basically ammunition. I, I you know I have to take the high road and yeah. Try to problem solve. Definitely meet with them. Definitely hear what they have to say. See if we can come to, right. you know, to some mutuality. But I'm not going to go. Sure. I'm not going to turn this into ugliness. I'm not going to do it. You so are the captain of the ship. The deck crew can change. First mates can change. Mm -hmm. Right. All of that can change. But mm -hmm. the the ship is defined by the character of the captain. You are the mm -hmm. captain of FMA discussion, and I believe that the vast majority of the people who watch FMA discussion will uh um will will go along with me in 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 affirming this that you are the captain of the ship stay strong mm -hmm. right rough seas ahead captain but this is your ship and yeah. we're we're all along for the ride we appreciate what you do we trust and believe in you um you're gonna get better at at this uh you are going to get more familiar with these seas and and the you know, and the territory, but I have uh, I have a tremendous faith in you. I love your authenticity. I love watching you evolve in this role. Right. You know, I, I, <laughs> it's mutual I, here to I, see like what you're doing, and I can't just thank you enough for like your support and what you did. You know, I mean, I, like you didn't have to do that. And you no, but I believe in you, man. I believe what you do for FMA is good. There is a self-serving element of this for me. Yeah. I want to see FMA grow, and I see you as a as a as a growth element in fma right guys you guys are with me dean franco is the man we appreciate what you're doing um and yeah that's it that's all i want to say no that's well, all i want to say right back at you and uh thank you and again thank you for taking the time away from the family and coming on and you know doing this i know oh, with course, short man. notice <laughs> you know of course um yeah i didn't give you much time to you know to think about it and uh 
so I appreciate it. And uh, but yeah, please don't be a stranger. I mean, I would love to do more joint things with you. I think we have such a nice chemistry, you know. Um, I, number right. five, angle. All right. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. When um, I do the number five angle, you're going to have to do the hanging stuff. Oh, the, oh, the hanging guard. <laughs> you're going to have to do it. As long as you keep falling for my bait. I'll keep sticking my stick out. Um, uh, Jesus. <laughs> this is terrible. Mandate. Yes. This is our this is our mandate, right? Oh my god. We're overdue. Um, we're overdue for the meeting in person. Oh my gosh. Oh dude, that's gonna be great. That's yeah. gonna be amazing. <laughs> bromance. <laughs> oh, bromance. Yeah, I, I'll believe me, I'll think of other themes we could do together. So don't uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm not going. Oh, by that. the way, if you want, um, yeah, ladies, um, the women's, uh, please, uh, we can do it over and over again. Mm. Oh, that's not right. But I, uh, we can have threesome. Again. No, uh, we, we we'll do a. <laughs> uh, no, I really want to have a discussion with you. I want to get down and dirty and get to the issues that you really want to talk about. I feel like to a certain degree, I think men in, in Filipino martial arts don't really know how to engage either. And I think mm. uh, there's a certain um, con level of condescension that is like super whack. And it's like you're being coddled and just they're agreeing with everything you say, <laughs> you know, just because. So let us straight up have a real conversation, mm. I think. Uh, what I can promise is that by the end of the conversation, everyone's going to be glad. This is bringing up Dan Lohman, yeah. and I'm trying to think if I'm missing something here. Uh, maybe Dan not. Lohman. Maybe not. Maybe not. Dan Lohman's also Florida. If I'm missing something, glass on that. Uh, just let me know if you have any. I don't think I am. But yeah, so let's. Uh, I'll let's do that. Can, we could do it together, definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. And by the way, I am so super duper accessible. Sometimes when you, you send me a message on messenger, I don't reply and then I forget and then it gets buried. If there's something that I can be of service of in the Filipino martial arts community, whether you want me to share a post of an event that's happening or mm -hmm. somebody needs help, somebody's, you know, house burnt down or whatever. Uh, I just, uh, this friggin' art changed my life. And I owe it a great debt of gratitude, and I want to be able to repay mm, that. Same, same, right? Huh? Yeah, on a on a on a selfish, narcissistic end of things, right? There's a there's a there's a legacy for the Rubios. I want my my children and my grandchildren uh, to to have Filipino martial arts in their mm. life in a state that's flourishing and that continues to grow, and that they can be proud of their great grandfather's contribution to it. In the years, you know, yeah. 2017 to whenever I stopped doing Filipino martial arts, I think that's okay. I think we can be. I think it's it's okay for us to want to make a contribution that we can be proud of, and that generations in the future can be proud of. In the Filipino martial arts, I think legacy is extremely important. Um, and legacy, and and I'll, I'll I'll quote someone like Mick Coop. There's a difference between building a legacy and building an empire. Empires are designed to crumble. Empires don't Design. last. Legacies do. Yeah. All right. So well put, well put. So I'll leave you with that. Yeah. So thank you so much again. Um, yes, don't be a stranger. Um, well, I'll you know we'll definitely as always stay in touch and um, and all that. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, again, thank you guys. Thank Gladys, Stefan, Mila, Jack. Brett Reese, yeah, thank you all comment, and Dan. Absolutely. Yeah, these are awesome. You cultivated yeah. a, uh, a, an incredible community here. Well, well done, brother. Thank you for your time. Great, great help from you, Jack Latour. I mean, you know, it, I have to give credit where it's due, man. So it's, um, yeah. But it, what a just a wonderful thing, huh? You know, when people have the same goals oriented and what they can do. It's amazing. Take, you know what I mean? It's amazing. You know? Absolutely. All right. Well, I know you got to get going, man. But um, thank you again. And um, yes, sir. Spend the family that I took you away from them for an hour and a half. <laughs> so. It's okay. I don't like them that much. I know. I yeah. why, why would you? I mean, <laughs>
All right. All right. I got to I got to hop into this meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Coach Danny. Thank you, Dan. Yes, I you guys. All Dean, right. Stay handsome, brother. Uh, I'm going to try, man. <laughs> Right, thank you. Okay. All right. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Hey, Brandon Ricketts. What's up, man? I got to learn. There, oh, boy, there's a man, man. 27 year old. That cat is doing, man. See, we should have. I want to ask him a question because he inherited a, a, a lineage, right? Oh, his uh, a system. Oh, GM. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. I, I would love, and, and based on what you say about that, yeah, man, that's a dude in my radar, and that's somebody that. Oh, you know, if I, I need support, I would be more than man. happy can, to. I'll make it happen for you. We can both. Oh, let's let me it. know. I would, I would yeah, love to bring it. him on with you because I, um, I have so much things to say about that that guy, what he, that young man, what he's doing. He, I'm telling you, yeah, the elders can learn from him. Ooh, <laughs> hey, let's you make heard, it happen. You I, heard I'd here love first. To. So, all right, Brandon, homie. Thank you, man. Dean speaks uh, uh, just no. so highly of you, and that that's meaningful to yeah. me. All right, I got to go, you guys. All right, take care. All right, peace. Bye-bye. All right, folks, thank you all that uh, jumped in and commented and all that. So I hope everybody kind of got the, um, that we came about this in a positive manner. You know, we weren't bashing or anything like that. And actually, in my case, you know, definitely wanted to work things out and hopefully for a better outcome. And I hope that was seen in evidence tonight. Also, who is next coming up? Uh, GM Ray Floral tomorrow, 7 p.m. Me and Tom Pena uh, will be interviewing him. And uh, so if you got questions for him, by all means, uh, PM me. Hopefully there's a flyer circulating out there. I'm hoping Tom Pena has gotten that done. If not, I'm about to do it. So a lot of that being said, if you have not subscribed to my discussion, please do so. Uh, all the money that we receive from the channel goes to charity. We do not keep any of it. So you are actually helping us help other people because we all give to charity. That's FMA discussion on YouTube. All right, folks, thank you, and I will see you next time.